So this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the man himself, Lou DeBella, for the latest edition of DeBella's Digest. And Lou, it's only been a few days, but how's your recent times been? An Olympic gold medal uh, at super heavyweight for Bakadir Jalal makes my last few days much better than they than they were. Um, I was, you know, frankly, I was up till four o'clock in the morning last night um, watching and then talking to people and, and uh taking it in. So it was, you know, it was a great achievement for him. He's worked real hard to get to that point. And um, I, I think he's ready for a, a pro campaign now to go full swing and uh, to be a factor in the heavyweight division pretty soon. Um, so I, I, that was the good news. The Olympic boxing was the good news. I, I, uh, I thought the bout, but by the way, between Andy Cruz mm. and um, Keishon Davis. Davis was a terrific bout. And, I think you have uh, – Keyshawn Davis didn't win a gold medal, but he's going to have a terrific career as a pro. He's a very, very talented athlete with extremely fast hands and um, a real good skill set to make it in the, in the pros. And I'm looking forward to watching more of uh, Keyshawn Davis as a professional. Do you think Andy Cruz will win the uh, Val Barker Trophy, the best boxer of the games? I think he was. I mean, overall, I mean, I think if you look at just the overall skill set and, and, and his performances, I think he was. Um, he, had, he also had, you know, a, a, a pretty difficult road. I mean, even though he was a big favorite, you know, he had to beat some some very good fighters. Um, I think he should. And given um, Jalalov's triumph, I do have to ask you just generally what you feel about pros entering the Olympics. It's only been a factor the last couple of games. What, what do you make of that whole issue? I mean, there are pro tennis players playing, pro basketball players playing. There's professionals all over the place now participating. And the rules are the rules. Um, if the rules weren't what they were, Jalalov wouldn't have turned pro. Um, it wasn't, you know... He, it wasn't that he turned pro. He turned pro knowing pros could participate. Um, I understand the point of those who feel, as they do, who feel that professionals shouldn't compete, compete particularly in a combat sport. But frankly, Jalal have fought almost every major tournament in recent years when he was, uh, you know, who's fighting professionals sort of in the gaps. The mm -hmm. deal I made with him was until the Olympic Games and until his amateur career ended, his amateur career took precedence. So scheduling of his pro fights with his manager were done around his amateur schedule, not the other way around. So um, I don't know if that makes it any different in people's minds, but I mean, look, I never, he, he, he was based, I always considered him to be sort of still duly an amateur and a pro. I never, he was never pushed to beyond six rounds and eight fights all all those fights were four or eight rounders. Um, we weren't act actively searching to advance him with, you know, quickly to get him into the rankings before the Olympics or anything like that, or, or manipulate politics because frankly, he still was fighting amateur, um, you know, but I think he's gotten his feet wet in the pros. Now he's in a position coming out of the Olympics at 28, you know, I think he's 28 now. Um, he's in a, in a position to, to advance, you know, he's going to go back to Uzbekistan, celebrate. I, he's the only boxing gold medalist for Uzbekistan in these Olympics. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be celebrated greatly in his in, in Uzbekistan, his home country. He's going to go back there and enjoy that experience. And then um, I'm guessing, you know, in this uh, in the fall, he'll return to, uh, you know, fight a pro bout this year and, and maybe, you know, at least one. And um, And I think he'll be on his way to big things. I think he's a very big man with a very unique set of skills. Is it something of a bonus from your perspective? Because usually someone wins super heavyweight gold at the Olympics and there's a massive bidding war for their services. You've already got him under contract and he's just won the gold. Yeah, but he just won the gold. So I'm going to be fair to him because he just won the gold. So, you know, I'm going to sit down with this manager and we'll adjust some things going forward. And, um, it's a reflection, obviously, as when you win a gold medal, there is added value to you. So, you know, um, I have a contract. Yeah, of course, it's not going to be a, a big bidding war, but um, he needs, he still needs some investment, uh, you know, promotionally and, and professionally in the ring. Um, you know, he's not going to be rushed 
so yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I'm grateful that I have him under contract. Yes. Um, but I also think that, that, um, winning and he, he definitely helped his standing and his value with a super heavyweight gold medal at the Olympics. And, and I think that'll be reflected in his future with me. Now, apart from Jalalov and, and Keyshawn Davis, who we've just talked about, who else from this uh, year's Olympic class stands out as potential, you know, elite pros for the future? You know, I didn't really, I didn't really digest the the Olympics, and, and I didn't watch every bout, and I and I um and I sort of had preconceptions about some of the people going in. I mean, I think that there were talented, a lot of time. There was a lot of talented fighters. The talent got much better as you got to the medal rounds, as it should. Um, I saw some women that could really fight, and I thought the overall quality of the women um, keeps getting better because women are participating more, and there's a much deeper talent pool. Um, I didn't think, like, this wasn't the kind of Olympic class that I walked away saying, oh, oh my, there are scores of people that I think are going to be great pros. But... Um, I certainly saw tremendous potential from uh, a number of fighters that were, uh, you know, you, you got, oh, I thought I, I loved uh, Yafai, yeah. um, Bilal. Uh, I, you know, that's a fighting family and, and, and this kid can really fight. I thought his, I mean, he, he, he has a perfect pro style. I, I tend to look not so much at who medals, but who has a style that can, can, you know, make it as a pro. Um, and I thought there's one guy I'm not going to mention specifically because I don't want to because I'm hoping he slips under the radar. But but, okay. but uh, um, no, I you know I, it's like a, a you know there are there are diamonds out there in the, in that in that class. There are guys, there are fighters that did not medal that will turn into terrific pros, and there are also gold medalists who I expect to see one day be world champions. I I, uh, I think Keyshawn Davis definitely has world title talent. I think that. Uh, um, I, I, you guys said the UK, you had a number of fighters that I thought, um, have championship potential. Um, I, I loved, I loved you I thought he was terrific. Um, is it Whitaker? The, the, uh, ben he, he, yeah, That's he's skilled. a very skilled guy, like a very skilled guy. I'm curious. I think he's more of an amateur style, but he's, He's still going to be difficult. He has a difficult style to, to fight and to beat. Um, uh, I actually thought the guy he beat in the Olympics could be a good fighter, Kataev. Mm. Um, but, you know, there, there, there was a lot of talent I saw. And, and, but, but it wasn't a class that knocked my socks off. It wasn't like when I was a kid and, you, you know, every, you saw almost every medalist as a, a potential, uh, you know, world champion. I, I, I I did think, though, that there were many fighters that will that will have good careers. And what about Torres? Obviously, he didn't go his way in the final against Jalalov, but put yeah, in a I good account for himself. I, I, yeah, I should have mentioned him because I think he's really interesting. I think he's gotten a lot better. He's not a big heavyweight, um, mm. but but he has a lot of grit, he, a lot of heart. Um, at, you know, he, he's a, a relentless kind of high pressure kind of guy. He's going to be fun to watch. So, like, you know, the combination of, of his silver medal, some attention he got in these Olympics that, where he really exceeded expectations, and a, a really fan-friendly style, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what he does in the pros. You know, it's an interesting thing because everyone, you know, so many people make fun of the Bridgerweight division, <laughs> but to some extent it was made for somebody like him yeah. because when you're his size heavyweight, it's just very difficult to compete on the highest level with guys that are, basically you're as good as you skill wise but you know have you by 30 pounds and and uh and five six inches you know so um it's gonna be interesting to see what they you know how he how he campaigns as a pro how they match him um but i'm certainly interested to see how the young and look he's a really interesting kid you know the more i learned about him from you know part of the problem by the way is olympic coverage here was so terrible that fans didn't get to see or get to know these guys. Mm. You know, I read about Torres, or I wouldn't have realized how, what a well-rounded, interesting kid he is, what a smart kid he is, a valedictorian, you know, uh, you know, a, a kid that uh, very, very bright, um, plays guitar, 
uh, musician. I mean, he's the kind of kid that if people get to know him, he could become somebody, you know, not just based on his boxing ability, but his overall ability as a marketable person, an athlete. But it's not like the Olympics in the old days where a kid that would go, go to the medal round from the U.S. and be sort of a rocky story in the Olympics where you, you virtually see no coverage of him. So, you know, that's too bad. And I think that's too bad in general. And I, I don't really get it because I know that boxing's not where it was generations ago. Okay. But I also know that more people are probably wa- in- interested in the United States and watching boxing than field hockey, water polo, or a number of other sports that are given a lot more shine. And I just wish for the sake of the young athletes, particularly the, 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 the athletes in the medal rounds that, that, you know, there's more of an opportunity in the future to get to know them, get up close and personal with them and actually see their fights at a, you know, televised. Great stuff. Lou, I mean, you- last night they did show at, at 1am, they did show the, the, the finals on uh, okay. the NBC which is an over the you know network here, but frankly, I, w- I wasn't even aware it was going to be on CNBC till like midnight. Someone called <laughs> me and told me that, so I didn't have to watch it on my phone. Um, but you know, I, I was really pleased last night. It was uh, it was exciting. It was fun to watch. I'm happy for Bakadir because it really has been a, a lifelong dream of his, and it took out the stench from the horrible decision I watched uh, a couple hours earlier that was really shocking to me. Um, it was a fight that I scored literally scored 11 rounds to one. Wow. And there was a unanimous decision in favor of, this was in a, this was a three and zero guy, by the way, fighting somebody, a substitute opponent, Mike Fox, Mike fought a brilliant yeah. fight. Um, this was a three and zero guy fighting for a world WBA belt. So start with that concept. <laughs> and then the guy tried to skin his gloves and tried to cheat and got caught in the ring having skinned his gloves, taped them up so high over the laces. They basically taped them up so that the glove pulls tight and it's more of a weapon. So basically, he and his people started to cheat, tried to cheat. And then uh, just a horrendous robbery of a decision for a Venezuelan fighter, which wasn't an accident in in my view. Um, It it was just terrible on so many levels. And I'm not going to get into dissecting the anatomy of that fight or the you know, dissecting why it occurred. But we, you and I have had those discussions ad nauseum about the various reasons why j- the system is broken. And last night was just a monument to the system being broken. It's such so a Mike, shame. Fox, Mike Fox deserves to have that, in my mind, fairly meaningless belt, but it, it should be around his waist. And by the way, if he got the decision, it was his night. It was his night. He fought the best fight he's ever fought in his life. I mean, what it does to a kid's career and what it does to a kid's psyche to be violated like that. And that's the right word, violated. Because it was beyond just, though, it was a, so, they, you know, you don't, you don't like the decision in a fight. No, no, no. He was violated. That fight was, that was a, he was not supposed to win and he didn't. And and short of, honestly, the fight he fought, which was as close to a shutout as you can have, a fight in which he scored the only knockdown and won 11 out of 12 rounds, he didn't get a decision. I mean, there's nothing he could have done to win that fight on scorecards. Nothing. And we got to do better than that. We got to protect fighters from that. And we have to protect our sport, which continues to fade because of its lack of credibility, in my view, largely because it's, of its lack of credibility. No, I completely agree. And there's since been some tweets that have been unearthed. I think you've probably seen them by now from one of the judges in that fight that, that suggests she has some racist views. Um, and I think Mike was well, made I mean, aware you know, of Yeah, that. but I, I got to be honest, I, I, I saw those. Clearly, she's got, she's got some racist views. I mean... Uh, it's unacceptable what she put up on social media, but that's not why she picked against Mike, Mike Fox. That's, that's not why the decision was what it was. Decision was what it was because the fighter was lauded and supported by the Venezuelan government because the, the, uh, there were two WBA judges on the panel, um, you know, and, and both of whom, uh, 
Gloria, Gloria Martinez, the judge, her husband is a WBA official that works closely with the WBA. Right. And, and she's the judge for the WBA. And the WBA was originally in Venezuela, you know, was with, were Venezuela. I think, I think Gilberto's Venezuelan. Yeah, they're based there. Yeah. You know? And, um, well, they were based there. I don't know where they're based anymore. They've, they've, they've oh, jumped okay. around a bit. Um, but they were at one point they were based in Panama. Well, the mm -hmm. other judge with the, was based in one of the other two judges was based in Panama. Right. Um, and, and and people, you know, the, it, it is what it is. You know, the, the uh, and you ask yourself why is the three? Why was it sanctioned for a title in the first place with a three and O guy for any kind of belt? A thirty four year old three and O guy. It, it, it's just this. It's a system. It's not. I don't want to. You know, I try not to overfocus on one event because it happens way too often and it's a system that's broken. I agree. Well, let's hope the uh, Olympics, which largely had quite good judging this time around. You know, some yeah, well, you know what? Let's let's give credit where it's due. Also, part of the reason why they uh, the fights were somewhat hard to score, I thought this year, a little bit harder than usual, is that the referees let the fighters fight more. Mm. They weren't as proactive in ways that, that caught your attention. And I also did think that the judging was, for the, ver for the most part, the fairest I've seen in a number of Olympics. So, you know, credit where it's due, uh, I think that there were some positives to take out of the administration of these fights at the, at the Tokyo Olympics. I do like to end on a positive note. <laughs> so it's good, good stuff. Lou, we'll catch up with you again um, in around a week's time. Um, but Good yeah, to talk hope, to you, Danny. Hope you have a great week. Thank you. Bye -bye.